How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. End of the weekend is upon us. May 18th, 2025 is the date. 10, 17 p.m. That's California time here. Uh, latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.1 across the Alaska area. Let's go ahead and check out trimmer activity, right? We, we've been covering Cascadia trimmer activity here. For the last few nights out here on the channel and there's uh, still quite a bit of uptick here going on across Cascadia with 646 epicenters of trimmer today alone. Most of that, well, you know, it's probably a split difference here between the northern end uh, around Seattle and the southern end of the Cascadia here in Northern California. Uh, this has been a, an ongoing event here over the last couple weeks with a uh, total tally let's check out the total tally here of earthquake or not earthquakes but they're trimmers uh that's a well-defined trimmer event there at 7209 epicenters of trimmer across the cascadia subduction zone that's a decent trimmer uptick here for a short period and if you look here on the chart um, most of the uptick here has been since about the beginning of the month not so much there back in april but uh, more so in may so that number here uh, in terms of the trimmer count is going to look more prominent up here across the trimmer data chart this goes back to about 2010 or so since the trimmer has been uh, monitored and uh, it's a decent and elevated trimmer count compared to areas uh, or time since about the end of 2022. So continuing to watch that, that you know, again, it's a decent amount of earthquake or uh, trimmer activity. It's not earthquake activity. I want to say earthquake activity, but it's not. I, I relate myself or I relate the activity there to the Cascadia subduction zone in terms of earthquake activity. But what's happening down underneath this region is trimmer activity and not related to earthquake activity yet. But the trimmer activity obviously is a sign of uh, impending strain out there across the Cascadia subduction zone. One more earthquake here across the uh, area of the southern end of the Gorda Plate. 2.7 earthquake coming in this uh, just earlier this evening. Uh, really not a whole lot else showing up there across Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. But again, this is the weekend, right? So during the weekend periods, the USGS tends to take a back seat, back burner, in terms of earth, uh, earthquake activity reporting here. So uh, this could get revised Monday morning, tomorrow morning, as uh, far as filling in some earthquake activity out here. San Francisco region, minimal activity there, not a whole lot going on. And if you look at the uh, Southern California map, not a whole lot for 2.5 in the map, or 2.5 and above for the map there. Uh, generally small microquake activity out there across Southern California right now. Nothing of any abnormal movement. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, there's some earthquake activity showing up. You wouldn't know it, but there is. Uh, let me show you guys the, the uh, earthquake map here across Yellowstone. And uh, I'll show you guys here the spitter spatter event that took place earlier this morning. Quite a bit of earthquake activity in about a three hour time span here. Probably seen close to over a hundred earthquakes in that three hour period there. It's very prominent there across the uh, seismograph station. This is nothing big in terms of larger magnitude, but there was a bunch there for a short amount of time period. That earthquake activity did show up as well across the area uh, towards the uh, let's see here, towards the Purple Mountain area, but looks like the epicenter of earthquake activity occurred around Maple Creek. Nothing big. Obviously, nothing big going on there, but uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm kind of interest, interested to see what uh, the USGS uh, puts in there as far as the multitude accounts. The rest of the states there look pretty quiet. Hawaii out there showing up here on the map around the... Uh, uh, looks like just around the uh, southeastern area of the Kilauea volcano with a 2.3. Nothing of abnormal movement, though, for that area for now. Uh, taking a look at the earthquake 3D globe here. Last 24 hours. Uh, remains relatively quiet out there across the Pacific Northwest and the northern end here. 
of the Pacific Plate. We are getting a little bit of uptick here across Japan and the Izu Trench with a bunch of four stern up there. Keep an eye there on the Nankai Trough. Typical movement there across the crunch zone. Um, so yeah, New Zealand's backed off here for earthquake activity, but uh, this could easily fill in overnight. Uh, the Mediterranean area, a couple threes and twos, maybe even a four-pointer way up north here. Let's see where that's at. Looks like a four-pointer stirring up around Poland, way up there north, five miles deep there underneath this area. Not uh, too often do we see earthquake activity up there, but it does occur on occasion there when things are amplified across the Mediterranean region. Aside from that, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet there, folks. Crazy that there's not a whole lot of activity showing up there on the Earthquake 3D globe across the uh, states. Just some uh, minimal movement. There's a, even a 2.6 showing up there in, uh, well, maybe that's going to be Nevada. Let me see where that is taking place there. Yeah, it looks like uh, uh, maybe the EMSC model reporting a bigger quake than what the USGS is reporting out here. But not a whole lot of uptick going on. But uh, again, keep an eye on the Cascadia. It's been, you know, that trimmer activity that's occurring downstream there into the subduction zone is a, it, it's a key. It's a key witness there to uh, maybe a big quake happening out here soon across the, the uh, Cascadia. Solar activity, well, a little bit of sea flare movement earlier, but uh, we're we're entering into a little quiet period out here across the sun right now. Uh, this sunspot area has completely diminished as far as complexity goes. That was a massive area here a few days back, but that, wow, really not anything to write home to grandma about, that's for sure. And to be honest, there's nothing out here of any any noteworthy value there across the sun for now as far as the earth facing side of the sun goes it's that's just what it is less than one percent chance for an x flare 25 percent chance for an m flare is fairly reasonable i don't see any chances of m flare activity occurring out here within any of these sunspots uh, for now though far side watch let's go ahead and check out the uh, latest imagery there 518 that's today's date for Sunday, not a whole lot coming around the uh, uh, the eastern limb. This is going to be the eastern limb out here, right? This is a flat scale model of the sun. Eastern limb uh, looks like maybe some area out here in a darker region, center disk. But there's a number of days that we have to wait for before that comes up uh, around the uh, eastern limb. But watch this area, see what's going on out here across the northeastern limb of the sun. But, you know, there's there's really not a whole lot there expected uh, as far as any solar flare uptick. That's that's just what it is right now. Uh, I did see some major uh, tornado activity out there today. Let's go ahead and check out the latest storm reports there from the Storm Prediction Center. As far as tornado activity goes, a lot going on, uh, a lot going on in Oklahoma, Kansas. Colorado, even up into Nebraska today, 30 reports of tornado activity out there today. That's a, I've seen some um, photogenic tornadoes there that Reed Timmer was chasing earlier today. Quite a few other storm chasers caught it. It's uh, crazy, but it is springtime, right? What happens when you get the colder and warmer air mixing? You get these tornadoes out here, and that's just very common across this area of the country. That's why they call it tornado alley nothing new here this is not anything new that's come up out of the blue all right uh, look at the live seismograph stations there a couple offline I, I don't know if they came back throughout the day or not but uh, yeah there's a, there's a few plate boundary stations offline there haven't really been watching it actually they're there you know they're still offline I'll check here tomorrow morning, see if they uh, don't come back up or not. But a lot of times here, they will go down, and I'll have to reset the system out here. But uh, for now, we got the couple different seismograph stations out there monitoring the activity. It looks pretty quiet, though, for now, as far as local activity to those stations. Uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye here on things. I'm, 
I'm watching the Pacific Northwest relatively closely here, and and, and the reason why I say that is because of the trimmer activity, the the uh, increase in trimmer activity occurring across the Pacific Northwest in Northern California. It has me concerned a little bit because we haven't had any type of trimmer event like this uh, since about 2022, the end of 2022. And the trimmer activity obviously a sign that pressure is increasing out here across the Pacific Northwest. So we could see a number of things happen here. We could see a Cascadia earthquake or we could see some surface events take place there across the Pacific Northwest as far as uh, uh, surface fractures. There's some earthquake activity that can take place out there uh, associated, obviously associated with the Cascadia because of the strain um, across many fault systems out there across the Pacific Northwest. But right now it is relatively quiet, but I do want to keep an eye on this area very closely because of the tremor increase uh, that's taking place out there right now. It's definitely on the elevated side. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good evening. I'm going to call it a night. I uh, I think it's well past my bedtime here. 10.30 at night on a Sunday night. Yeah, I think we're two hours overdue. <laughs> Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here in the morning for the Monday morning update. Take care, folks.